Happy fucking Friday. I'm Gay and Bruno, host and producer of Between the Sheets podcast. Um, welcome. Um, it's been a crazy week. We're not going to discuss it. We're not going to talk about it. This show is purely going to be just pure fun and information and sex. Oops. Um, but because we haven't done a sex show, I mean, really ever. I mean, in my first and second incarnations of the show, we have, but not this time. So we have a wonderful person with us. I can't wait to tell you about her. I'm sure you all know her and love her. Um, just forget, don't forget, we can call in 323-524-2599. We're on the first and third Friday of every month. Um, obviously, you're watching us. Tell your friends, share, start watch parties. I'm obsessed with my hair tonight. Um, but I just want to introduce the ladies that are joining us. We have straight from the UK, our favorite Brit, Cara Noble. Hello. Then we have our sex kitten, otherwise known as Mara Shane. Hi. <laughs> then my BFF bud, soul sister, we get in trouble together all the time, Kimberly Sanchez. Hi, everybody. And then we have, she's sort of a floating co-host. Uh, she's been involved in the kink world for a long time. Um, and her name, and I think you remember her, is Margie Duran. Margie. She's got some gloves and shit with some oh, code. Know. I don't know what the fuck it is. But I want to tell you, our guest is mis mistress. I want to call you mixtress because I used to be a DJ and yeah. they used to, and I used to go mixtress. So it's mistress, Justine mm -hmm. Cross. I'm going to read this really quick and then I just want to get to conversation and mayhem. It's so much fun. Um, she's a professional BDSM. Um, I think I know what that means, but she'll explain it. She's a consultant, a lifestyle dominatrix, based in LA. She is the owner of both Dungeon East and Dungeon West, which is our Los Angeles's premier dungeon studios. And they've been used for vote videos and photo shoots. She's got over 10 years experience. Um, she's done print, radio, video. She was in Janelle Monae's Make Me Feel video. And the oh, you were in the 2014 film Bound? I did not know that. Um, <laughs> I was in it. I was just working on the consulting for it. Well, it doesn't matter. You were part of it. That's all that matters. Um, she's been in tons of campaigns. She's, she's everywhere. She is like the best. She also, um, I don't know, she's kink, she's her, she's perfect, and she's with us. So mm -hmm. let us all give a warm welcome to Mistress Justine Cross. Woo! Hi, Justine! Hello. Oh, Justine. I'll start the craziness with a basic question, and then we'll go from there. What really do, do the initials BDSM mean? Uh, yeah, so BDSM is an acronym, so and that stands for bondage, uh, dominance, or discipline, and sado, uh, sadomasochism. Um, so to parse that out a little bit more, bondage is anything where you're restraining someone, getting tied up, that could be with like uh, cuffs or rope, uh, dominance or discipline, um, you know, anything where you are dominating, um, exerting power or control over someone. Um, sadism is the act of in, uh, deriving pleasure from inflicting pain upon someone, and masochism would be deriving pleasure from receiving that pain, and you can be a sadomasochist, so... Well, I think I fit every single one of those categories <laughs> at some yeah, point or another. What do you call somebody that likes it all? No, I'm not kidding. <laughs> a slut, you know. A good yeah. time, my best so, friend. Come so. down to the dungeon, yeah. So how did you, like 10 years ago, like what were you doing before? How did you get into this? Where? How was your path? Uh, yeah, well, it was something that I did in my personal life. And then after college, um, I, I have degrees in literature and psychology. I moved to Los Angeles. Um, I had a couple of pros in the scene. Um, and then I just Googled Los Angeles and Dungeon and I started working at a commercial space. Um, and I was there for about a year. And then I just it just kind of took off and I just kept doing it more. I kept getting laid off from like my, my vanilla straight jobs and, you know, I just started doing it full time as a pro dom. Uh, I, you know, then I needed my own space. I got Dungeon West that became its own separate business. Um, that space was very booked and very busy and popular. So then I needed another space. So then I have Dungeon East. So I have sort of three uh, businesses operating concurrently, but, you know, separately, they're, they're three separate entities. So wow. 
the girl. <laughs> yes, yes. Do they rent out for movies? I mean, or, or by the hour? How does it work? Yeah, they're they're rented out quite frequently um, for movies. Um, not a lot right now because of the quarantine. So um, we have been in a lot of porn shoots. So if you're familiar with Kink.com, um, Evil Angel, those are like the bigger porn things that have happened there. A lot of smaller stuff as well. But there's been um, music videos. Um, the a movie Bound was filmed there. Um, you know, and also just like a, a lot more like TV stuff has happened there. So we were on Little Women. Um, we were on Love and Hip Hop, uh, Hollywood. What else? There's like so much I forget things. I'm oh, just like various like specials on like A and E and Bravo and stuff like that. So it's it's been in a lot of things. So yeah. Everybody, you're watching Between the Sheets here on United Broadcasting Network. If you want to call in, please do three two three five two four two five nine nine. So anyone have any questions i don't want to i don't want to dominate this because you know i'm a dominator so you guys i know you guys have tons of questions because we've talked about all of this prior to justine coming on so let's open up the floor uh i'll start um i'm pretty much a goody two shoes and i've never participated in this but i have fantasies about it and my fantasies are mostly about spanking and people watching so I would like to know if you could touch upon, no pun intended, that, like, wh how is a newcomer welcome to this, like, without scaring them completely from the beginning? Um, yeah, well, I mean, I think it's, um, you know, normally under normal circumstances, I would say, you know, come to a party, um, come to a party that I'm having at my play space, um, because it's a safe space um, to to get spanked and have people, you know, watch you get spanked or go to, you know, a club. Uh, my spaces tend to be the safest. Um, it's a little different now with quarantine. It's, it's, you know, what's happening. It's a little different. So, but I mean, we can do stuff, you know, virtually, <laughs> you know, you can, you know, do things where people are watching you. So that's always safe. Um, you know, something that you want to talk about um, where, wherever you're going or playing with people is that you want to establish, um, whatever your safety protocols are. So you want to be doing things like you want to talk to someone about things that you like doing, which is like thanking and like, you know, being watched um, and maybe also, and just also things that you don't want to do. Like maybe you don't want someone to pull your hair or to choke you or something or spit on you. I mean, definitely not now. No one wants anyone to spit on them or maybe they want it even more. I don't know. So, um, <laughs> you know, uh, that's something to discuss. Um, you know, I always uh, tell people to use a safe word um, and that's good. I also actually um, just, um, I can send you a link for it. Um, I just made something called it. It's a, well, I uh, just edited a bit. It's called the Concise Kink Negotiation Worksheet. And it's just one page. It's free on my website. And it does a really beautiful job of breaking things down in terms of like what you want to get out of kink, like what names you like to be called, like what role you have in it, what you like about it, what are things you want to do, what are things you don't want to do, and then other sort of questions about like safety, like do I have like medical injuries, like what does a panic attack look like if I have one, you know, things like that. So that's like a really good jumping off point to whether you have someone to play with or not to just kind of like have that like check sheet, you know. Can you describe a party? What would it be like to walk into a house? Like is there a bunch of people just all situated in different corners doing things? <laughs> My party graphic and some people around the town have been to them and definitely tell you. So um, yeah, I run uh, two play parties. One is called BDS Spam, and that is a play party for cis and trans women only. And that happens at Dungeon East. And then I run a co-host Deviant, which is an all gender queer play party that happens at Dungeon West. Obviously these are on hold uh, for for, for now, <laughs> um, but the, the way that we would run them is um, I would hire a couple of different doms to work different stations. Um, so those doms would work stations like um, we would do impact play. So we'd usually have a spanking station. We would have someone do flogging. Um, I would usually make my partner do the flogging. <laughs> um, I would do electro play um, with that's with a neon or violet wand um, and, and just have that set up. We'd have boot blacking. Um, so everyone would have um, a guaranteed safe experience with a professional or even if they weren't really professional they were someone that i've known for a very long time so i knew that they were 
professional in the sense of like the experience they were giving them. So, but then, you know, all the areas of the studio are open so you can, you know, play, you can bring your own toys. We have, we would have things uh, passed around so you could safely play, um, you know, no phone cameras, video recording of any kind allowed. Um, obviously everyone was very respectful of that. Um, you could be naked, you could have sex. Like it was awesome. And it, it was nice because a lot of people would always say, um, whether they were playing a lot or, or not, some people were, but there was always this moment where like, if people were kind of enjoying themselves, all of a sudden, like a bunch of people left. Cause you know, that they were just like, I have to go home and fuck right now, but like, <laughs> I can't do it here, but we gotta go. Like we were so turned on. We just gotta go. So it's like, you know, but, but everyone would just say it was always a fun time. But what, um, what I'm sort of most proudest of is that everyone said it was, they just felt really safe. Um, and there's just, such a lack of safe spaces. Um, you know, I'm a queer woman um, for for women, for female bodies, um, you know, for queer people. And then obviously, um, you know, I know we don't want to spend a lot of time on it, but also just for POC folks. So it's very important to have safe spaces, um, whatever community you identify in. It's so important to have those safe spaces. And I'm glad that I was able to provide them and will be continue to do so in the future um, for people in my community. So Gavin, so at the end of the night, um, if, if you're not turned on, do you have an omnet station? A what? An omnet station. No, we always have food. We always have cheese and, you know, like drinks. <laughs> you don't have to play. No, but you don't, that's a good question. You could be a lawyer, like, right? You could just walk around and be a lawyer, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, you can totally just lawyer. I have like, I have so many friends who I have met there. Um, I have people who have like, you know, um, found their play partners there, their girlfriends, but also just like shopping buddies and like hiking buddies and just like craft buddies. Like, Damn, it's not just the answer. <laughs> okay, I'm in. So hold on, so I have a whole bunch of questions here. Number one, um, I wanna be a Dom when I grow up. So can you teach me how? And I would love to like work with you. That's mm -hmm. number one. Oh, everyone's mouth just dropped here right now. Oh, number right. two, um, Gavin Newsom just said that film production with the whole code is going to open because I'm in the film business mm -hmm. and January, I mean, January, June 13th, I think. So um, will that you think affect you guys since the, or that you, you will be able to open and then just have like guidelines to follow? Um, well, we've never really been closed, but it's just in terms of, um, you know, people, uh, you know, uh, other obviously Southern California has been really affected by this. So um, a lot of people are in the film industry. So anything filming really hasn't happened. Um, people aren't really seeing um, clients, um, you know, uh, that's really difficult. Um, and also there's just a lot, if basically a lot of travel has been grounded, a lot of people might only play when they're out of town or they're making a trip to be here and they can't do that. So it, business in terms of the dungeon stuff has been really slow. The more things open up, um, the better it will be for me because people have the idea that things are open. So, um, you know, I, I want things to be open. Um, say, here's the thing. The dungeon has always been the safest place during quarantine. I'm sorry that no one really knew that because you could have had so much fun there because I already had like steroid wipes, alcohol, everything else. And I know no one else had it at their office because you all had to go out and get it. I already had it. So like my space was actually the safest and most fun you could have had. But in terms of, you know, I can't do group events there. I'm not going to be doing classes. I, I've moved everything to online. So back to your first question about can you be a dump? Well, yes, you can. Um, we have classes. You can go to Los Angeles BDSM events.com and we are going to be running all of our classes virtually. We have a lot of stuff coming up this week. Um, we're going to be doing classes. Uh, some of the classes that I run specifically are BDSM 101, uh, we do a bondage 101, a flogging and impact play. We're going to be adding more classes um, for summer uh, summer school because I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> So, so you're going to come to summer school with Mrs. Justine. So, and we're going to yeah. develop a class about like how to be a great dom and how to be a great son. So those are going to be coming up in, you know, June and July. Right. Now I know someone on this show has been to one of your parties. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I was going to you always, you, know. you always call me out. No, <laughs> listen, I did go to one of her parties. It was fucking awesome. Okay. And, and I thought I was just going to go watch. And you know, there was this cross thing and I was like, fuck yes, tie me up to that and like whip me. Oh. Did yeah. you? Did my girlfriend whip you? She did. Ah, she right. Very there. gentle too. She kept checking in. She's like, how are you doing? Are you okay? Yeah, <laughs> like, yes, this is awesome. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I really, I really liked it. I mean, I didn't understand a lot of the things I saw and I, I felt awkward, I think asking questions and I think I would like to know more about it on, a, on other levels, but mm-hmm. yeah, I don't, it was really hot. It was okay. really hot stripping off your clothes and getting tied up to that thing. Mm-hmm. And, and it yeah. Cross, right. Yeah, yeah. St. Andrew's cross. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised I knew that. I'm sure you are. <laughs> <laughs> How many people were watching you, Kim? I don't know. You know what? You don't, I, I didn't really think about people watching me necessarily. It was just, it was really the experience and, and the whip and, and the kind of being like really vulnerable and um, not having a lot of clothes on in front of people. It was, it was very cool. That's brave. Yeah. Well, I would I do mean, it again. I mean, I, I know some of it because I was the VP of entertainment for West Hollywood Gay Pride. And me and a couple of other people were the forefront people to put together what was then known as Erotic City, which was the the whole place um, was all about BDSM and other stuff. And and I remember I had no idea what it was. I just helped push it through, created the name. And I remember like during Pride, um, because I was mostly part of the entertainment, I sort of walked over and I walked into something that I said, what the fuck is that? And it was, um, I think, fist fucking 101, which was, I must say, I was so shocked and yet I couldn't leave. <laughs> I just had to watch. But I mean, like, like the safe word, okay? So a safe word, is it how, like, is there like certain safe words? Do you decide with your partner or the person what the safe word is? Are they secret? No. no, they should not be secret. Be secret. Um, no, no, the, a safe word is just whatever word um, everyone who's in the scene decides is either like the call to slow down the action or to stop the action completely. Um, you could use traffic lights like red meaning stop, yellow means slow down. Um, you know, again, this is covered in like this concise kink worksheet that I put together. You should never be using that word as a joke um, or when you don't mean it. Um, You know, it's good to have a word that's like very different from your play. Um, You know, that's why some people use something like popcorn or, you know, um, sometimes uh, in play parties um, or different public events, the house safe word is safe word. That way, uh, if there's a dungeon monitor, well, there better be a dungeon monitor. If someone else hears that someone is saying that, it's sort of a group um, community consent to watch out for everyone. Um, so that's really good. Um, again, at my events, they're, they're, they're fairly small and I have like about like six dungeon monitors. <laughs> so it's, it's pretty safe environment, um, as safe as I can make it. So, but yeah, safe word is very important. So. Mm-hmm. Sounds, so like, it sounds like a school, kid's school, all these monitors. Well, you have to, right? To make people feel is safe. That law? Is that, mm-hmm. is that law? Is that just for, to make the evening go better? It makes the evening go better. I mean, again, it's like, if you think about like a good party, you, I, I am the hostess, but you want to have like, you know, your best friends, like who are helping you like be like the mixer. So it's like, I have a few people like being the mixers, but also like they're watching out to making sure that everyone is doing safe things. And also they're not doing really dumb things. Like, you know, having a glass of like red wine, like about to spill on my bondage bed. Cause that's going to definitely piss me the fuck off. So <laughs> it's stuff like that. And it's like, you know, making sure people are like, okay, checking in, like to, do people have water? Like, do people have lube? You know, like all, all the fun things. So, yeah. So, Margie, do you have anything to say? I'm sure you've been sitting quietly. I have because I'm so fascinated. It's so, I haven't met you yet, but I heard about your dungeon a lot. Oh, and, thank you. What, and what, one of the creators of the women's event called Desire Leather Women in Palm that takes mm-hmm. place normally in Palm Springs every end of May, beginning of June. Um, mm-hmm. That it's it had been going for 19 years and got canceled this year from COVID. Mm-hmm. But, you know, some of the rules, general things are, the guidelines are safe, sane, and consensual. Mm-hmm. SSC is one, that, mm-hmm. so that's a common thing. So if it, is it safe, is it sane, and did you both agree? Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted to mention some books. There's a woman named Dossie Easton who's been around. She's a, a psychotherapist in San Francisco. She wrote the book called The Topping Book, mm-hmm. The Bottoming Book, The Ethical Slut, mm-hmm. um, how, how to Come Out to Your Family When Someone You Love is Kinky. That could be a good one to, to look at. Mm-hmm. And then she wrote one on spirituality and Tantra, but I can't remember the name right now. I'm sure I'll think of it. So there's books. Um, I wanted to mention Munches as a place to meet people. Mm-hmm. Those are safe uh, venues where you meet in a restaurant, usually not wearing your gear, but every once in a while you find a friendly restaurant. And then 
I, I, I'm pretty sure you're not as, as thrilled with some of the, the uh, organizations as some of them have changed over the years, but there's some organizations in town too that are you know bigger places. They have classes, uh, hands-on classes where you can go uh, get training. Um, they have websites, they have groups. Um, there's also FetLife, which is an online kink community. You can't cruise for people there, but you can certainly explore topics um, ask questions, you know, you might go into, I'm a new bottom room and say, hey, I'm a new bottom. What have you experienced out there? Um, there's a lot of things like that. Um, most dungeons will have, they're, they're called dungeons and they'll have monitors. Um, Desire doesn't really have monitors. It's a, it's a wilder event. Have, have you been or have you heard of it, Justine? Um, yeah, no, of course I've heard of it. I was actually planning on going this year before it got canceled. Um, so, you know, um, they, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, it is a different kind of event. It's it's generally right. not for, for newbies, <laughs> as far as I understand. But, um, you know, they do have dungeon monitors because my friends have been them. So, but it is a more self-monitoring kind of space. Mm -hmm. Like, um, you know, so, um, but, but yeah, those are all really, really wonderful. I mean, I, again, like we are not doing any in-person classes um, until further notice. Everything we're doing is online and, and figuring out the best classes that we can do online um, that are the safest and what people uh, want to, you know, have. So we're doing a distance BDSM class, actually. We're actually doing a fisting class on Tuesday. <laughs> oh, why? Sign me up. Yeah. Um, I have no nails now. I can do it. Um, <laughs> Mara, yeah, I just it totally embarrassed Mara. I love it. So I'm looking at your website now, um, losangelesdominatrix.com. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking under specialties and interests. Um, wow. Um, okay. <laughs> what? I mean, tease and denial, that's kind of what it is. It just, it's exactly what it is, right? You mm -hmm. want to tease someone with like stuff and mm -hmm. you go, no, no, no. And that makes them like, huh, like more excited. Correct. Yeah. Like think about putting a vibrator on yourself in an area that you really very much enjoy to have that vibrator and then having it there for a little bit and then taking it away and then yeah. putting it back and taking it away again. You know, so something like that. I use that a lot. So I have a question. What are your thoughts about vibrators and what do you think about Mr. Hitachi? Um, I think Mr. Hitachi is great until I found out about, you know, Mistress Doxy. Um, the Doxy what? is quite the level up. Yeah, I don't, it's a, maybe my partner can get it for me. Um, oh, yeah, it is gorgeous. And it is like the Rolls Royce. It is oh, well. beautiful. I get my glasses. Hang on. Yeah. I, 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 have been a, I have been a follower and have many Mr. Hitachis, but if you're telling me there's a better one out oh, there. No, 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 no. If you love the Hitachi, which I love, I love the first version of the Hitachi, the one that has like the like little circles. Oh, like little the, circles. Yes. Yeah, that one is the best one. Uh, many have died a noble death, but yeah. you know, it's okay. My partner is getting the doxy on the other side of our house here, running, running, <laughs> wiping it down. <laughs> well, well, Mr. Hitachi, uh, Mr. Hitachi, whatever. This, okay, well, first of all, this is just absurd because it just like comes in its own like carrying case. That's Very like, nice. Delicious. We can't see it because of the virtual background. Okay, yeah, but it's fine. Okay. But, you know, so this is, let's see, it's hard to, oh, there we go, okay. Oh, it's black. Oh, it's not unlike my new microphone. Yeah. <laughs> it's back. So hey, hold on. What is it called? I have to write this down for real. D O X Y. And I, I, you know, I have so many like, you know, affiliate codes and promo codes right now, but I don't have one for this one. This is like $200. $200. Can you hold it up in front of your body and then we'll see? Yeah, it. sorry. It's like hard to, I never do this with the. Oh. Okay. I love the yeah, color. So wow. Back. And they have ones in different colors. I think they have it like silver, gold rose gold or whatever but this i think is like two hundred dollars i think it's british so this is like i think it was like one Ara? <laughs> so yeah but this is like really super nice and everyone that's used it has just been like oh my god i thought i loved hitachi and then so the intensity is more than hitachi or more speeds it's just smoother because it's like with this there's you it's like a, a plus minus so you can gradually go up or down and the hitachi is just like lower high so yeah um, and then, and then it go, and then you get to numb every and, once in a while. Yeah, and then it's just the Hitachi is like is awesome, but it's just not very pretty, you know. It's just like white, and this is just like actually sexy, so that's nice too. Well, Hitachi really is it. a back massager, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sure. 
All right, so the next one. Are they not so noisy as they used to be? Are they as noisy as they always were? Yeah, this, this one's pretty quiet. This and that's the other thing. This is very quiet, and the Hitachi is a little bit louder. So, yeah. but again, yeah, this is nice. So, okay. So the next thing, which I really don't know what it is, electro play. <laughs> okay. Oh but, my god. <laughs> that's, a, that's a red for me. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, electro play. So it's um that's anything like um. A, a, something called a neon wand or a violet wand. Um, they're actually, I'm seeing a lot of ads for them, even though they're not calling that on Instagram lately, if for your face, because it's supposed to kill bacteria. I don't know, but you see, so you can use it like that, but it's, um, it's just a sensation. So it's just like a wand. And when it has contact with your skin or near it, it's going to kind of, uh, electrify it but it's not like super painful it's more like a stimulus sensation i mean depending on where you put it on your body but it's safe to put everywhere on your body the neon wands come in um a lot of different colors they come in like red purple green the violet wand only comes in that like kind of classic violet color um so but they're fun they're just like different glass electrodes you take out and put in and stuff so that's one one level and that's safe to put everywhere on your body. Um, the other set of stuff is going to be anything with a box. So that's gonna be a TENS unit if you've ever uh, needed you know, some pain relief. Yeah, I know, okay, so, so that's what that is. That's just the same thing. You can have pads or different things or different electrode attach attachments to put in your body. That's all below the waist. So you have a TENS unit, PES and um, Aeros Tech. They're all pretty much the same. Aeros Tech is my favorite. It's an expensive toy. It's like about a $600 box. But the things that you can do with it are just so truly amazing because I can basically, I can make it very painful for you, but I can also make it very stimulating and, you know, actually just help you to an orgasm just using this electrode box or just make you feel good. Yeah. I think I know after this is over where the Between the Sheets one year anniversary party is going to be at. Um, <laughs> All right, so corporal punishment. Um, yeah, so that's just going to be anything, um, you know, any any hitting of the body with okay. like your hands or toys. Yeah. Um, okay, financial domination. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So, so that's any, I mean, there's a lot of ways to do that, but it's just, you know, it could be adopting a bill, someone just, you know, giving me a lot of cash, um, tipping me extra, you know, spending a lot of money on me presents, uh, list, kind of stuff like that. So that sounds like a good one. I like that one. Um, yeah. Okay. It says foot fetish and then size eight. What is this? What does the size have to do with it? The size of my foot. Oh, okay. So what is, what do you, what, what is a freaking foot fetish? I mean, seriously. Uh, yeah. So foot fetish is just going to be anything like, you know, worshiping my feet, kissing them, massaging, licking, you know, stuff like that. So some people like dirty feet, some people like clean feet, um, you know, sometimes like shoes come into it, things like that. So some people are into like trampling. Um, yeah. Wow. Okay. Dungeon dinner dates. I can, I get that's, I figured that one out because I saw the thing. All right, here we go. Trampling. I'm sorry, what was that? Trampling? Trampling. Oh, okay, yeah. So that's like, you know, anyone just lying down and, and me just, you know, walking on them, stomping on them, standing on them. Yeah. This seems like, it, you do that in like heel, like spike heels, heels right? Like, um, yeah, I can do that in heels. Some people want barefoot trampling. Some people want, you know, trampling with heels. Yeah. So I have a question. So when you're doing that, so I guess because does it ever become just a job for you or is it always pleasurable for you as well? Um, well, it's, you know, it, it's really my career and my business. So I, I'm only doing things that I really enjoy doing. Um, you know, it really depends on the client. I mean, it's, more often than not, this is just a really fun job, you know, and I, and I do love it. Um, you know, there's always like some bad days and like things that happen, but like I could do anything I want and, you know, but I choose to do this and I'm really good at it and I really love doing it. So it's, you know, um, constantly figuring out how to move with the market and, you know, current economy and political situations, of course, but it's like, this is, this is truly what I love doing. There's always like some, you know, clients that you'd rather work with more. And that's just not even just like my one-on-one -on -one clients, but it, even in terms of like various people I've worked in in like Hollywood and stuff, you know? So, but it's like, for the most part, like I'm really happy with my job. Like I don't get sexually harassed. <laughs> I mean, that's just one, you know, I really don't. So <laughs> there is no, yeah. So I have a question. I mean, someone just texted on the um, thingy. 
Um, is there anything that you won't try? But before you answer, these are these these. Well, okay, first of all, what's GS? A golden shower. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so that's what I thought. Wasn't sure. So it says limits. No, thank you. So these, I'm going to guess that what you're saying on that you won't do. Correct. Sure. Mm -hmm. So is there anything not on that list that you won't do? That you won't do. No, that's a pretty complete list. I'm just horrified at some of it. I have to say, and I'm not like a square. Brown showers, I already know what that is. Heavy medical play with, with needles. Face sitting and smothering. Any nudity, any sex on her part, any nudity, any subbing, switching. Male cuck holding. Smoking ashtray fetish. And anything that ends with a job. I love that. I totally <laughs> love that. Um, so um wow really people that wow all right so let's get to okay i i never even thought any of that would that would be like something that people would want to do for pleasure although i have to tell you red, red shower mental fet, menstrual fetish um that as a woman i remember like back in the day like if i had my period and my partner wanted to have sex i was like fuck no and they were like yeah i'm like no but like Wow. Okay. I mean, okay. I, yes. What? I, are you saying some people like that? I'm mean, going to guess it. It's on her okay list. Oh. Okay. Right? Justine? Yeah. So, I mean, I think it's important that, you know, um, when we're talking about kink and BDSM and sexuality in general to something I say in all my classes is to throw glitter, not shade. And I know everyone's coming from a different level of experience and, you know, what they like, but um, I just want to try not to kink shame people or sex shame people. And that's really important to me. So, you know, menstrual fetish is, yeah, um, uh, it's not something I do very often because my period lasts like two days <laughs> and I don't have that many people into it. But um, yeah, there's a lot of different ways that people are are into that kink. Um, and, I didn't even uh, know it was a kink. I mean, I don't know. I mean, because- Everything is a kink. Everything, everything is a kink. <laughs> so, um, so when people like want to come, then they fill out a questionnaire, they discuss things with you as to- or do they look on the website and they automatically know what you offer? And then when they want to do any of the kink things, do they tell you in advance so you know how to prepare or do people mix and mingle and they just know what you offer and then they ask at that point? Um, no, before someone comes to see me for an appointment, which I, again, I'm not doing right now, but generally um, anyone who is doing that, I have a, um, a booking form that they fill out and they tell me the things that they want to do, things that they don't want to do, what their limits are. And I am agreeing to that. And then when they come and before I even see them. So they go through a whole screening process. Then when they um, come to the, the dungeon, um, unless there is very specific uh, role play that would start from the moment they walk in, I take a couple minutes and just go over all of that again and say, hey, just to review, we're doing this, we're doing that, we're not doing this. This is what's going down. We're doing this for however many hours. You give me my money, whatever. And that's, that's <laughs> what mm -hmm. awesome. Um, what else? Anybody, anybody else have questions? I feel like I'm the only one here. So just one person in the dungeon when 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 you're working, Justine. Uh, yes, my studio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, my studio more. is an open floor plan studio. So there's only um, one booking at a time. So they're both very big spaces. They're about fourteen hundred square feet. Um, they have uh, you know a bondage bed, the St Andrew's cross, which is that X that we were talking about, uh, a spanking horse. Um, they're also equipped with a full queen size bed, um, a kitchenette and a full shower. So a lot of people do spend overnights there. Um, people spend whole weekends there. So yeah, lots of fun stuff to do. Mm -hmm. And do you do couples as well? Do you um, counsel couples or mm -hmm. guide them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see couples all the time. Um, you know, I think I'm going to start doing some more like one-on-one -on -one training um, in the summer because I, I usually do see couples obviously a lot in person, um, but I've been having a lot of requests for like private instruction and classes, you know, online and, you know, stuff like that. So, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So I want to get to sort of, not that any of us are psychologists here, but I want to get to this sort of like the psychology because like I've read, you know, and, you know, we all read a lot of stuff and some of it's bullshit. But I've read that, you know, a lot of men, women that are executives, you know, when they, when they venture into the world of kink, they prefer BDSM, they usually are the ones that prefer to be the submissive. Has that been like, 
truthful or at what you've observed as well, or it really doesn't matter? Like it, it's just whatever you, you like to do. Uh, no, um, a lot of people are kinky. Um, you know, the, the exec trope is just something gets trotted out all the time because, um, well, for many reasons, uh, mostly because those are the clients we want. They have a lot of money. Um, but again, it's- uh, I love your honesty. Thank you. Well, yeah, you're welcome. I, you know, can I do? I just tell it like it is. So um, the the people who are um, accessing um, their desires and feel like they can um, have them are going to be mostly white middle-aged men for several reasons. One, because they always think they can get whatever they want, no matter what it is. Two, um, they have the money. Um, three, they have the agency. So these are going to be most of the clients that you see that are going to be coming in for this service. That doesn't necessarily mean that execs are kinkier or they're more submissive. You know, that's not what it means. It has to do with access and why they feel like they can do this. Um, I can definitely say that I've been doing this in Los Angeles for like almost 10 years and I've seen a big shift of the clients that come to see me. Um, I've definitely gotten more, way more couples in recent years, I've definitely gotten single female clients. Um, and you know, that has happened and that has happened because like kink and BDSM have been out there longer. I've also done so many things in the community. Again, I've been running parties of my own and, and very much out there in the queer kink community. So people see me or they've heard of me. So they trust me and like, I have a lot of visibility. So that's been changing. Um, I can also say that because I'm renting the spaces, um, I have this other sort of set of data that more, uh, it used to be only men calling me again, just to book me and sometimes to book the dungeon. But now it's really half and half about like women and men both booking the space for their partner. So that's a huge change that like just in the last few years, a lot more female voices on the other end of the line who want to book the space because they're like, oh, I just saw this and it looked really cool and I'm excited about it. And that's super exciting to me. So that's that's shifting and that's changing. And I think that's so important because, um, you know, uh, women or female bodies are often like not allowed to have their desires or told to not explore them or have control over them. So I'm really happy that I'm seeing that shift. So per your clientele, I mean, I know you have parties. I mean, like your parties are normally mixed, like straight, gay, you know, I mean, or is it like straight parties, then there's a lesbian party and then there, you know, I mean, how do you figure out how, I mean, how does it work? Okay. Yeah. Well, so I, the, the parties that I throw, um, I, again, I throw BDS femme and that's a women, uh, that's a, a play party for cis and trans women, but you don't have to identify as the GLBTQ fam. But you probably will before you leave. Yeah. So you know, but again, again, it goes back to like safe space. So like, I do have women who come and they identify as straight coming to that event um, because there just is such a lack of women only spaces to explore your kink and sexuality. Um, so there's that, and then deviant is an all gender queer play party so you do have to identify as queer but you can be any gender to come now i will say every once in a while a straight guy comes in and he's just really confused like i'll see him walk in i mean i very much explain exactly what's going to happen and they think it's going to be like um like you know flow jobs and like you know like no that's not it's not so like i see them walk in and they're like oh my God, it's exactly what she said. And they walk right out. Or like, I had this like funny experience where like someone came in and like my co-host went up to him and they're like, are you, are you queer? Cause this is a queer party and you have to be, you know, queer. And he looked over and he's like, no, I'm not. But like, but Justine, like she's straight. Right. And at the time I was like, just making out with my girlfriend and like throwing her against the wall. And he's like, oh, okay. Like, you have to go buddy. So <laughs> no refunds for you. So you're very open with your um, sexuality. I mean, like how you identify. Do mm -hmm. you think, has that ever harmed you or hurt you um, in the straight community? Because they're thinking, eh, you know, she's gay. Or do you think it doesn't really matter in the, in the BDSM kink world? Um, it doesn't matter because it's not something that I... I was never ever in the closet, but it was not something that was like sort of part of like my marketing or persona because it just didn't matter. Um, but it wasn't something that I, I disclosed until recently, but it's so funny because for the people who know there, there's only two kinds of clients in this world, 
the kind of client who literally knows what color my toenail polish is right this second. And the other one is just someone who still calls me Justin. There's no in between. <laughs> they either know everything about you, every single minutia, or they're just like, I think she might have hair. Like there's just no, so like, I, I guarantee you that some of my clients like totally remember and know that I'm gay and other ones are like, what? what's gay? Like they have no idea. So it, it really doesn't matter. And, you know, again, it's like, I, I just do things in my community um, for the queer community. So. Well, I've heard of you because of Kim and our friend and our mutual friend, Jackie, which is oh. why you're here. And yeah. then of course our, our other friend, Lisa interviewed you. And I have to say it was a wonderful interview too. So I really, we're not done yet, but I just want to say, I, I really do appreciate you being part of our community, mm -hmm. doing what you do, educating as well as providing fun um so and, and being on the podcast so thank you so much I, i'll say it later but i just really i'm learning so much yeah. so anyway uh, so margie do you have anything to say mara cara got it didn't rhyme it like rhymes mara cara kim margie what margie, margie. i want to hear what marguerite has to say are you not ordained or are you queened or you're something right you've been oh i now i follow a really different path when you go into the pro dom world it's it's a whole different world than the leather world. And that's where I identify is the leather world. Um, originally came out of military men coming back to the States after war, joining bike clubs and bringing leather into the bars. So that's kind of where this started, San Francisco, New York, LA. And um, that's kind of the tradition I got mentored into. But for the record, I was brought out by a heterosexual pro-dom and I'm the only female slave she ever collared in all her career. And so that was, I was trained by a pro-dom and it was kind of fun. Uh, and, and she did it in, in a, a, just a beautiful way. But I did choose later to follow a leather past and um, there's a tradition, Gayanne for the record, everybody that does the original leather past starts out as a bottom. You get to learn how everything is done on you. And then after you've reached any proficiency in that, then you get to try the other side if that's what you want to do. And that's I've been a bottom for way too long. I think it's time I rise up. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a switch. I started out as, as I thought I wanted to be a slave. And uh, I, I was uh, part of the Temple of Atonement at Burning Man one year, which is a BDSM theme camp there. And... Uh, I was a slave for a week and by Friday, I was leaving Sunday. My head was saying, if anybody else tells me anything else to do, I'm gonna scream. And you know, I left with my collar because I didn't scream. But it, it's, a, it's about tradition and about earning your right to walk further in that tradition. So we can go into the details of that if you want, but you, know, you have to remember it comes out of military and, and motorcycle clubs. So Justine, thank you, Margie. So Justine, I mean, obviously you're a dom. Have you always identified as a dom or have you sort of done both or I mean? Yeah, I've always identified as a top or dominant, a sadist. Like some people have very specific words that they use to identify. I, I really just use all of the top ones. <laughs> so yeah, so all of those, all, all the top things, mistress, yeah. So your partner, who came and brought you the va the doxy. I mean, she's not, I mean, I know she's there because I keep seeing you smile to say hi. <laughs> <laughs> but is, I mean, is she considered like, if you're a dom, then she's a sub? Um, no, well, you know, what we do at parties is um, we co-top together. So she is topping someone with me. Um, so she is also a, a uh, a dom um, and does like flogging and she actually teaches our flogging class and has flogged people and made them very, very happy. So, yeah. Right. I don't know what flogging is. Could someone please? Do you want me to show you? You have a flogger? I, I have one. Yeah, I do. I have one over here. Oh, Justine, why don't you demonstrate on your girlfriend? <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Yeah. So, um, okay, so this is um, oh. Right, this oh. Is a flogger. So, oh. This was a, a custom made one for me. Um, it's like very soft. I wanted it to be like a Louboutin. So it had the red in the, mm -hmm. in the um, so it, I, I, we, we don't do an impact play class like because it's uh, the flogging because it's hard, but it's just so this was just like a whipping 
motion. So, yeah. So you can do it as you can do it. If you do it really, really hard, besides that, it'll make welts. I'm guessing it'll hurt more, obviously, right? Um, you can't, this is really soft. You really can't hurt someone with this. It's so soft. It's just, it's just like a massage. Like the things that I like to use, I like to use canes or single tails or the electro place stuff that we were talking about paddles. Um, excuse me, stuff like that. This just feels really nice. You can, you can get floggers made out of different kinds of leather. Mm -hmm. And like, I have a goat skin one that's extraordinarily stingy, kind of like a, a single tail. Yeah. So, and then you can get heavier leather that can actually leave marks like buffalo hide mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and deer skin might be the lightest one that you you can make yeah, all it's like, got a great sound you could beat somebody for days and not hurt them mm -hmm. but it sounds fabulous okay mm -hmm. so okay i have a question because margie you said the paintings behind you were yeah. done in single tail well you were That's talking about that you were talking about the pride right I'm going to show you this green, this, this paint, this painting was these, all these paintings were made by a gentleman named Mark O'Keefe. And um, he made the green one at Pride, at LA Pride for me. He let me pick the colors and then he takes this one particular single tail and he puts the ink on with a single tail whip only. All right. I, I, what I want to know is right. what the hell is a single tail? It's a, a whip with just one end, just oh. one tail at the end. Okay, so, so that's you saw the flogger she had maybe has like 20, 30. I like tail. that one. That looks like it's softer and gentler. Okay, yeah. So here's the single tail. Yeah. Oh, okay. Signal whip. So, and that, sorry, I have like the screen. So, um, and this has little mm -hmm. tail. So, the, this is going to hurt. This is going to leave a mark. Um, and, yeah, it'll and tear the skin. Yeah. Ooh. The, the good part about the end on that, just for the record, is that the end can be taken off and given to the bottom when their blood is drawn. So that you don't have to worry about mixing blood. So yeah. that's part of the safety. Yes. Our cat also really enjoys having like new ones. <laughs> it is like it is a four hundred dollar cat toy. That's what this. Is. <laughs> What's your cat's name? Um, we have two cats. Um, I have Maddie, and she's sitting over there on the couch. Um, and then we also have Jade. Jade is the one who loves the single tail the most. So. <laughs> Um, she's very excited by that one. So we have a lot of like, um, sometimes we'll just like, I mean, it's so funny cause like I have two dungeons, but it's like, we'll just like take like our whips out and we'll just like practice like here. And we're like, God, what do the neighbors think? Cause I always have all the windows open. I'm like, oh, maybe I should shut them. I'm like, whatever, give them a thrill, you know? So we're just like practicing with our single tails and whips. So, yeah. So you have East and West, mm -hmm. right? Is it like West Side, East Side? Is that in LA or? Yeah, yeah. So in LA, uh, Dungeon West is located based in Mid City, um, and then Dungeon East is located in downtown LA. Very okay. cool, Mara. Ask you something. Sorry, sorry. No, Mara, okay. you. Okay, so all the stuff I've seen on TV shows um, when it comes to this topic has something about like it has to be degrading to be really good. Um, is everything that's done, is that kind of, you're shaking your head no, Margie. So, I mean, I, I think that's cool if you want to be degraded. I just don't know how, it, it seems like that's always the underlying thing, that you, you want to be degraded while you do this. Is that wrong? No, no. Again, that's just like something you, you're discussing with the partner that you want to do this. Like, yeah, there are a lot of scenes that include degradation or humiliation but but a lot of them don't you know a lot of them can be very positive and uplifting like a category of just um uh you know empowering someone and it also just doesn't have to even though we talked a lot about dom sub where there is a power dynamic sometimes it, it's not so much a power dynamic it could be on like the same level of like some people are um some people just want to worship your feet so they just consider themselves a fetishist um, but they don't necessarily consider themselves a submissive fetishist. So, you know, someone might just want to have a conversation with me, like very, nor very normy, you know, and just talk to me and worship my feet. But someone who is, has a submissive foot fetish, like might want me to like order them and like yell at them or tell them to do a better job. And like, because they consider themselves submissive as well. So it's just, it's it just really like, you know, choose your own adventure of what you want to do and how you want to explore. Well, that makes me wonder if it ever gets into leaving the dungeon, like, like I've seen on TV shows where like they, 
like Drop Dead Diva had a great episode where um, where this guy was suing his dominatrix, uh, but it was all a law firm thing. But he was getting off on the whole. That's why he was suing her. And so anyway, they were talking about how she'd make him go outside on a leash and, you know, sit in the front seat like a dog in the car and all that stuff. So uh, I know this probably is really annoying to hear from because I don't really know much about it. But I'm thinking, does it leave the dungeon? Is it allowed to play out with maybe not with you, but like do couples take it elsewhere? Like. Yeah, I mean, there, people can definitely do public play scenes. Um, something to to keep in mind is that, um, you know, you and your partner or people involved in the scene are consenting to the scene, but like people outside of, of your scene aren't consenting to it. So you want to be very careful and do things that like um, are okay in the consenting public. Like, for example, mm -hmm. like I tell people, you know what, like if you want to like, you know, you know, put you on a leash and walk you around, that's going to be okay to do at like pretty much any Hollywood club um, <laughs> anywhere in New Orleans. That's not going to be okay to do in like Woodland Hills and like you know, the Whole Foods. Definitely not. Like that's, you know, you have to like know your audience and know what's happening, but there's a lot of things that you can do like that are sort of like, kind of like, you know, fucked up, but like no one would know that's like part of a scene, you know, like I've been out to dinner with people and like, um, I would order for somebody and like, I went out, one of my favorite things that I did is I went out to dinner with this like very well to do, um, uh, German gentleman. And we went out to this very nice place and I ordered for him and I ordered him like the shittiest Ziffendel and like, you know, basically like almost something off the kid's menu. And then I ordered like the most expensive thing for me. And then when it was time to pay, he like took out his wallet and I'm like, give me that. And I was like, I took money out of his wallet. I was like, this is for me. Okay, that's for you. And, you know, so it was like fucked up, but it wasn't like so fucked up and weird that like, it was like sort of violating like the waiter or the people around us. Like it was like, okay, you know, it's like, but it's not okay to do things like that someone might not understand as part of your scene. Like I wouldn't go outside and slap someone in the face, yeah. you know, because that looks like assault and because it is, you know, so it's like, you know, you have to understand like what that means. So, and what's going to be okay. There's ways to do it covertly. And yeah, so exactly. I, I remember doing a, a whole training um, in one of my training academy things uh, about covert play. Mm -hmm. Things you can do that people can't see. Like you put right. a rope harness on somebody and you, you know, if you tie up a male, you might tie up the balls really tight and make them walk. Or you could have a rubber band tied to their balls and every time they take a step, it mm -hmm. might pull on them so that they're hurting themselves as you go for a walk. Yeah, you, know, mm -hmm. you can do things like that at Disneyland. Right, exactly. Yeah, there's a lot of different things you can do, you know, or, you know, just like certain words you could say to someone and they have to react a certain way, but it, it doesn't look weird or different to someone outside, but it's just the control. It's just like, you know, like, you know, like a lot of things I do when I'm out to dinner with my, um, whatever, whenever that was out to dinner, God, remember those days, Jesus, so, <laughs> you know, like I will always like tap my glass and, you know, then it's like my, my submissive has to pour water for me or I need a drink. It's just like, why am I tapping my glass? Why are you not on top of this? Like get on top of this. So, yeah. Well, it's like a secret little thing. Yeah. yeah. It's training. And so Justine, all where my did you anyway? It doesn't matter. I didn't know I was practicing it. I just do that with all my girlfriends. <laughs> where did where did you learn how to do this? Um, you know, I, I learned a lot from honestly, um, I had a lot of uh boyfriends or play partners that identified as male and switches. So they were able to teach me so much because they understood from both the top and bottom side of it. Um, so I did that. Um, I, I never mentored under anyone specifically. I have read many books. Like I have read all like, you know, the Dossie Ian books that you recommended. Um, and, um, I've been to many classes like Midori and things that were at pleasure chests and stockroom. And honestly, I learned a lot from my clients. Um, you know, a lot of the equipment and things that I had, um, I, I had various things like, for example, the Eros tech, that's like very advanced. I had all this stuff and people wanted me to use it with them. And I said, that's fine, but I don't know how to use this. And they're like, oh, I'll just teach you. So, okay, fine. So like, I've learned a lot just from clients because they, 
they think that I'm hot and beautiful and like smart and they want to play with me and they're like, oh, I'll just teach you what I want to be done. And then I pick it up and I do it. Um, and just also playing with other people, watching, watching people at play parties, being involved in other people's scenes, like other, other coworkers. Um, you know, I, I would be remiss to say I haven't learned a lot from my partner who's sitting right next to me, <laughs> but you know, she's definitely teaching me how to flog, um, you know, and just, you know, every, every time you play, you're, you're just getting more, more into the scene, different things. And I, I've just been doing this for a long time and, and, you know, I love doing it and I, I just see a lot of different clients. So it's, have you, have you ever faltered? Like, where you were supposed to be the dom and in charge have you ever like faltered and and lost that a little bit you know um no but i have a really good trick for when that happens like one of my favorite things is like you know if someone is tied up and across the room and i trip it's obviously their fault and i'm like damn it it's your fault i'm gonna beat you for that you know and they're like i'm sorry you know like I was, you know, even this week I was trying to get a custom clip order out to someone and like all these just ridiculous things kept happening. And, and I just said, you know, I'm any, and, and I just kept telling him like, well, I'm sorry, this happened or that happened. And he's like, okay, I just can't wait to have it. And I said, well, you better be, it's your fault. This is happening. Even though it clearly wasn't, you know, everything is the subs fault. So yeah. But do people ever laugh in the middle of a session? Oh yeah. yeah I laugh all the time. It's fun to laugh. It's funny. Funny things happen, you know? Bodies happen, farts happen, like jokes happen, you know, like all, all kinds of funny things, like breaking character. Um, you Bringing know, out a dog toy as a dildo. Yeah, what? all kinds of things. What, Hilarious. Yeah, yeah. Why, what, what did you just say? I, I didn't hear it for real. So bringing a dog toy out as a dildo. Ah. Hilarious. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all kinds of funny stuff. Does every day scenario end with an orgasm or have orgasm involved, or is it not necessarily a a prerequisite. What did you say, Cara? I didn't hear the question. Orgasm. orgasm. Does it, do, do, do all your play rooms or scenarios end in orgasm? Hmm. Uh, they can. Um, usually that's how things end with, with clients. So then they leave. Um, but yeah, you know, it just really depends on what you and your partner have decided that you want to do. Some people want to come, um, you know, some people don't. So it just kind of depends on where you're at. It's just, you know, it's just really up to you. Oh. So how do you deal do you find that i mean i maybe not between you and your partner but other couples maybe that come in how do you deal with if there's jealousy that happens like unexpectedly um well yeah i mean jealousy happens it's a very normal human emotion um i am not a very jealous person <laughs> um i am I, I always say like you know i am not needy but i am demanding as fuck so <laughs> you know it, it, it's just about boundaries and like certainly like things come up like i have a i clearly have a very good and open relationship with i mean open communication with my partner we actually met at bds femme um four years ago so um you know she was already in the kink world um already knew a lot about um BDSM as well as like the prodom world. So a lot of that stuff that sometimes comes up like wasn't an issue. Um, we just have a very good communication. And even when things come up, it's like, okay, we let's like talk about this. This was weird or I didn't expect this to happen. Um, let's talk about this so we can just understand and then like let it go. Um, and and really that that's all that it's been because I think we just, again, we have a very good relationship. We understand each other very much. Um, you know, I always tell her, I'm like, I'm going to flirt with everyone, but like, I'm going to come back to you. So she understands and knows and like different things have come up while we've played with like people at our events and parties and stuff. And, you know, I'm like, I want to do this thing. And she's like, okay, I don't know. And I'm like, okay, I'll come back and check later. And then later I'm like, I'm going to do this thing. And like, you know, like, she's laughing because we, the thing that I'm talking about is um one of our friends, it was her 32nd birthday. So she wanted to have 32 fists like, you know, all night. Right. And I'm like, I really want to do this. It's like, you know, I don't want to like fuck my friend. I just, I just want to give my friend a good time. I got to like do this. And she's like, I don't know. And I'm like, okay, well, let me check later. Cause I was like, it wasn't so important that I fisted my friend, but I felt like it was so important for her to say that like, it was okay for me to fist my friend. And so then she's like, okay, cool. And then like when I'm doing it, I hear her cheering me on. She's like, yeah, I'm so proud of you. Like you did such a great job. So yeah, it was like fun. It's just, but it's just like open communication and just just, you know, checking in. And even though we've been together for a long time, um, we still check in with each other about like what we want to do, like with each other, like what we want to do with other people, what kind of play is going to be okay at a party. And I just, I, I just, we always check in to say, Hey, I just want to keep the communication open and know that relationships change 
needs and desires just change and you just need to keep that open communication and to keep talking. It's just so important. Is there like one thing that like you, that she will not, or you will not allow her to do period. No negotiation, just absolutely don't even come to me and ask me. Um, I don't know exactly what I'm allowed to say without consulting her first. So, <laughs> Bring her on. Um, I know she's there. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't, uh, she doesn't want to come on, on screen. So, um, uh, yeah, I think we do have certain things that are just kind of our agreed upon things that we don't, um, but, but again, it's just like, you know, things that like, you know, again, like I would say, like one of my friends said, asked me like, are you in an open relationship? And I said, no, not really. And then I immediately had a montage of like all the friends I had fucked in like the last like three months, but it was all in the context of parties and right. like, you know, well, there's work. I mean, technically it is, I don't know, but it wasn't work, but it was like my oh. friends and it was like things like that. So it's like, yeah. And yeah, again, and like, what is sex? Like, you know, so, um, it, but again, it's just, it, it's just like, we just, are always talking about like what is okay and like what feels comfortable for us and if that thing can change and you know um I, I don't think we've really established any like hard and fast rules that I can publicly talk about but it's just really an open communication I think we're both happy with like the things that are, are happening so but I think you do need to be uh, you do I mean to have like minds in a relationship <laughs> because if you were doing what you did and your partner either wasn't really interested in this it would be obviously i think a, much, a she she whoever that fake partner is that wouldn't be involved in bdsm and king it would be a harder relationship now before you met your partner now did you have other partnerships where they were open to this or not um to to varying degrees um you know it's certainly nothing i hid you know i've been doing this for 10 years this has been my career this is very public. So, you know, it, it's, um, it, it, it is a different kind of job, but it's also not like a job that that's that is like that odd per se. It's certainly, um, honestly a, a, a very safe job. <laughs> um, you know, it's, um, it is a very public job. It is a sexy job, but you know, it's like, it, now that I know so much about kink, like you have no idea how many people are getting off in the dentist chair. You just don't know. So yeah. it, it's, it's, it is different. Um, but again, and that's why I always just tell people like, here, here's the rule is that like you, it is okay to choose to date a sex worker. And it is also okay to choose to not date a sex worker. That is totally okay. But what is not okay to say that you're dating a sex worker and then to shame them about their job or to make a lot of limits or take away a lot of the things that they want to do for work. Um, you know, and, and with all the partners that I've had, we've discussed about like certain safety things or certain safety concerns, uh, sexual practices, like, and some things might've come off the table with different partners that I was okay with that we discussed, um, that just changed with different partners. But like, no one could come in and say, by the way, I don't want you to like this mistress Justine cross thing. Mm -mm, you can't do this anymore. Cause I'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. That's not happening. Thank you. Next. But it probably makes for like one of the healthiest relationships, I guess, because the communication is so open between you guys. But I was just thinking the first time I tried to have a threesome with my partner and I just come out as with a woman and had left my husband and, uh, we decided to invite this cute bartender, this boy bartender back to the hotel room. Mm -hmm. And he came in and he like started like kissing her and I couldn't, I couldn't handle it. Mm -hmm. I, I am, I'm like, you know what, you guys can go ahead and do what you need to do or whatever you're doing, but I got to go. And mm -hmm. I left. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, damn, I would love to be able to do something like that again someday, you know? Yeah, well, it's just like thinking about like, you know, thinking through before you get there, like what you want, what you don't want. And and to also like understand to have some um, forgiveness and elasticity with yourself and your partners that some stuff might come up for you that you didn't know is there until you're presented with it or something you thought you're okay with, like ends up not being okay. And it's like, I've had scenes um, go be, be fully discussed, fully agreed upon. And then something didn't go well. And then it's like, Oh, okay. That didn't go well. Nothing like super bad, but it was just like, Oh, that didn't quite go. And then it's just, you talk about it afterwards and try to figure out what happened. And if you can like re, you know, develop the scene or figure out what happens. But it's like, I always tell people like, you know, your desires and needs and wants, they're all going to change. And it's like, 
you need to have some kindness with people um, first to hopefully establish like just the basic trust and safety that you know that that person cares about you. And if something goes awry to bring it back to that place of like, wait, but I know this person cares about me and like, we can figure this out together. So yeah. But the reason is that, is that where the safe word comes in? Like somebody's in the middle of something and they feel all of a sudden like some childhood shit comes up or whatever. And that's (laughs) when they would use the safe word. Yeah, that's a totally great example of using the safe word. Like, say you get triggered or something is coming up for you and you want to, like, pull out of the scene and, like, kind of, like, break the character of it or just, like, you need a timeout. Like, that is totally okay. And sometimes you just need a timeout and, like, you just need to be, like, okay, am I okay? Like, am I here? Like, you know, it's, like, if if we've all done party favors, like, you know, you're, like, wait, stroke the furry wall. Okay, great. (laughs) You know, so what that is like. And then sometimes you can get back into it or sometimes you just need to stay with the furry wall. So, you know, that's like the control from the top side of like understanding when someone needs to come out of it or someone, you know, you can bring someone back into it. And and I've had scenes both ways. I usually, if someone needs to come out, I'm able to like walk them back in um, because that's what I do. And I'm very good at what I do. Um, But sometimes people are like, you know what, I'm just not into it because, you know, I can only do so much, (laughs) you know, I've had people come in and like, they probably had shit days, who knows what's going on. And like, they think they're into it. They're all into it. And then they're like, I just fucking can't do it. And it's like, okay, that's cool. You know, there's, there's only so much I can talk you into. So, yeah. Wow. I'm loving this education. It is 811. Um, yes, we are almost like through an hour and a half. And Justine, uh, really, you're amazing. Um, people, if you want to get last minute calls, it's 323-524-2599. It's actually a good thing, Justine. Mm-hmm. When I think that people get bored, they call in a lot. But when they don't call in, it's because you're fast. The guest is fascinating. So you are, fa- and, and, you're, and may I add, you're absolutely stunning. They told me you were, and now I see it in person. You are absolutely beautiful. And your partner who popped in before, beautiful as well. You make a beautiful couple. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Well, I, I, when I talk, I hope people are taking lots of notes. I just want to say again, if you want more, more stuff happening, like, you know, we are going to be doing a full lineup of, um, events for on online and you can always find them at los angeles edsm events.com and then also you know this is pride month and you know a lot's been going on right now but it is still pride um i hope you know we're going to celebrate in various ways and hopefully for even bigger and better things um as i see like a really big positive change happening happening in our country right now um with the racial se- uh, segregation and divide um but you know we, we are doing wonderful things. I'm, I'm doing an LA Kink Pride event. So all of that is coming up this week. Um, where we're doing it virtually or how is it being it is done? all online? It is all through zoom. So we have, um, uh, there's going to be a pet play mosh. Uh, there's going to be a fisting class. There's a lap dancing class. There is a twerk party. Um, someone is doing a class with cactus called succulent sadism. It's about playing with cactus and, and that kind of stuff. Um, we, we have a rope class because we must. Um, what else? Are we doing? There's so much. Oh God. There's so, oh there's a flogger making workshop. Um, and then uh, very important right now there is a um, a distance BDSM course. So that our class. Um, so that's like uh, from two people. One is in LA and one is in Alaska. So they've done a lot of long distance BDSM stuff. So that is happening. Um, We're also having a, um, like a guided meditation um, about like for kinky queers and thinking about like what you really, really want and, you know, um, getting in touch with your desires and wants and needs. So that is going to be lovely. I think that is it. And what's the website for that, that they can sign so, up for? Yeah. So the website for that is lakinkpride.com. There is a full lineup of classes. And then we also have, um, uh, all queer owned businesses um, on the food and drink page. So I know when we started this, we weren't sure what was going to be opening up. Some stuff is opening up. Some stuff is just going to still be delivery. Um, I have a lot of like uh, mobile bartender stuff on there. So, and there's a lot of discount codes for our vendors. So if you want to get some new toys, we have at least 15% off of a lot of really awesome stuff. So yeah. Okay, well, that's the website I'm going to. Exactly. Here we go. Go to LA King Pride. We have all the fun stuff there. So all the food, drinks, classes, you know, toys. And then, oh, and also for almost all the classes, there's going to be giveaway prizes for everything. So it's all at my dungeon now because I just did a little IG live about it. So I can't show it to you, but um, there's a lot of vibrators and lube and toy. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of stuff to give away. So you're making me so happy. What date is this? 
Um, well, it kicks off this weekend. So we're starting it on a, a Sunday. Tomorrow. Oh, Sunday. So June yeah, 7th. We, yeah. But all week. Mm-hmm. Wow. All right. So my other question for you is, you know, you've got the two dungeons, you're doing these classes. Where do you, where do you want to take this? Like, what is, what do you want to do? Like, where do you see this going for your future expansion? Yes. Well, um, COVID certainly put a wrench. Um, so yeah, the things that I'm working on now is that, um, I, I have, I do want to take this on a show level, um, because I want to bring like kink into people's lives and, you know, go more into consent and, and things like that. So I'm doing a lot of like things on TV and stuff like that. And I want to have more of my own show. Um, I have been getting more into the education of things, um, you know, and also just event throwing. So that's what I've been doing. And I've been wanting to take it at a bigger level. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with disco dining. So that's a really beautiful event put on by my friend Courtney. So more BDSM kink events like that. So, but you know, for now, um, really reaching out to people virtually has been lovely. Um, not as, I didn't think it was gonna be so wonderful because I just, I love people and I'm such a social butterfly and extroverted. Like I go out like every Every night of the week so this has been strange for me <laughs> him and i too but it doesn't seem as interesting as going out like you go out <laughs> i don't know so but um you know doing the classes that we've because we've been running classes like for the last three months anyway so we've been doing that and we've had people all over the country and all over the world and it's really opened my eyes to just like some people are like we just don't have well, for two things. One is that a lot of people said that it's just so much more accessible for people who have like either uh, disabilities or unable to leave the house or they can't get a ride or to be quite honest, like LA traffic is just the worst. Yes. So, you know, I totally, people are like, oh, it's going to take five minutes. It's going to take five hours. I'm never going to make it. So, you know, so we have a lot of people doing that. And then also a lot of people are like, we just don't have this class happening in like my small town you know, in the middle of the country or, you know, we've had people from literally all over the world. So we've had people from England and Australia and Ireland. And so that's also been really wonderful. So I'm I'm like building my, continuing to build my empire here. So. So you're touching on one or two of the good aspects of what's gone on in this crazy world Mm -hmm. right now. Um, And so do you think you'll keep, keep carry on with some of those online classes and get togethers? Yeah, you know, I think the social ones aren't really my forte um, because that's just really hard um, because I think the social ones only really are great if you basically, it's like a DJ dance party. That's, and I've been to a queer Seder online. That was like the best because it's very regulated. That was the only like good social one. Um, The classes are really great online because I can, you know, I can put up a PowerPoint. You can see me. I can answer questions and people can also type. So that's great also because again, sometimes people have questions, but they want to be anonymous. So then this is an anonymity for them. So I think I'm going to continue with the classes, you know, online all year anyway. I will probably, once it's safe to do so, have them in person again in the dungeon because then they're in the dungeon. But I'm going to continue online classes anyway, um, which I never thought of doing it before because again, I have the dungeon. So, but I'm going to continue the online classes now, definitely. So, yeah. I think we have a caller. I'm not sure. Kurt, or do we have a caller? Are they still there? Yes, they are. Oh, can you patch them through, please? They are patched through. Hello, caller. Welcome to Between the Sheets. What's your name? Is this, uh, I'm calling for the Integratron. The what? Is that me? I, oh, I think I've got the wrong number. I so think you do. If you knew what you were calling, you'd be hanging up the phone really fast. Um. <laughs> no, I was, I was calling Joe. Joe from the Integratron. Is it? it do I have the right number? Or, or Absolutely am I off not. Unless, mark? unless what you're talking about is involved in BDSM and kink, and you are trying to sell it to us, I think you do have the wrong number. Is it a vibrator? Oh, I have. I, I have the only thing I have to sell are experiences, and that's you know up to my editor. Mm-hmm. All right, well, thank you for not calling in and calling in. Have a great weekend. No, take care. Take care. Sorry, well, I got this wrong. I thought it was all about the dome. The pleasure dome is what you called. Um, oh, <laughs> but anyway. No, well, it is that. The Integratron. I mean, it's just, you know, I'm, I'm a friend of Nan and Joanne's. Long I, time. I don't know who. I, I'm sure. Thank you for having oh. checking though. Sorry, sorry about that wrong or that was posted on Facebook. Okay, thank you. 
Well, all right. Hey, okay. Kurt. Hey, Kurt. Yes. Is he gone? Yeah, he's gone. Okay. <laughs> well, I have another call for you, too, by the way, but I don't know if you want me to patch it through. I thought it was like a salesperson trying to sell us like a new a new piece of technology to use in in in, in this field. But I thought not. It was an auto mechanic or something. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Between the Sheets. So, um, Erin, thank you for joining us this evening. Um, it's Between the Sheets podcast. We're here the first and third Friday of every month on June nineteenth, which is uh, this year's Juneteenth. We will have Andrea Meyerson, who is the um, head and the uh, organizer and creator of Women on a Roll. And we will also have Grammy, I don't know if she's a Grammy Award winner, but she should be, um, Janet Robin, uh, who is an amazing guitarist. And she played with one of the, who, who did she play with, Cam? It was Mick Fleetwood or the other one from Fleetwood Mac? Or Lindsey Buckingham. I think Lindsey Buckingham. I don't, I don't. So it'll be a holy, whole, a holy, no, it will not be a holy show. It'll be a whole different show. Um, follow, follow me on Instagram, QTE Brett. Please like our Between the Sheets Facebook page. Um, I just want to say thank you, Justine. Um, thank you so much for being part of our show. Uh, it was fun, but extremely educational. I, I, I do appreciate what you said about, what is it, kink shaming or something like that? Yes, yeah, they're glitter, not shade. Yeah, Correct, I love that, I love that. And I think a lot of us, including me, you know, we don't know it, we're ignorant in a way. And I don't think, I think we just have to be more aware, especially not only about this, but I think with everything going on in this country right now, and I don't wanna go on and on because I talk about it enough and I think we've all read it and we all empathize with the situation that's going on. But I think people really need to have a little bit more awareness, a lot of compassion, kindness, empathy, um, and and really, I'm you know, in speaking to some of my friends, you know, it really is about sometimes our ignorance, not only like being white, but in any area that you are not familiar with. I think the person who on the other end is on that would prefer you ask questions, even if you think they're stupid, which there are no stupid questions than to make assumptions on mm -hmm. something. So yeah. I, I really, I really do believe asking questions is best in no matter what si situation you're in, um, because you'll get an honest answer and you'll get the right answer. So don't make assumptions and, and don't be an asshole because I don't, I don't like assholes and neither do it yeah. as anybody else. But, mm -hmm. you know, because that, um, you know, I always like to leave it with love, peace, kindness, compassion, empathy, gratitude, joy. Um, that's sort of my seven, eight word mantra. Um, it's all about self-care, self-love. To do anything in this world, you have to start with loving yourself. And I think you do, Justine, is why you present yourself not only as a dom, but I think just as a confident woman, because I think you take away all and every one of your titles. I think you are a grounded, centered person. So I appreciate that in you. And I think that is why you have the ability to teach and be open-minded. So thank you for what you do, not only in the kink world, but in everything else that you put your hands on. So I appreciate this. And I'm actually looking forward to LA Kink Pride as well. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate those words again. And, and I agree with you that yes, it, it so much of what's happening in interpersonal relationships and around the world, it's about communication and trying to understand each other and having compassion and kindness and, and knowing that and recognizing you may be ignorant in something, but to just try to have a conversation with someone and try to just think through things and just, just doing this a little bit more is so, so helpful. And, and we can all, we can all do more, we can all do better and, and have kindness for ourselves and kindness for others. And, and I hope we, we think through that a lot more especially right now. So thank you. Well, thank you. Um, also, I, I, I really can't wait till we're allowed to socialize and mingle because I, I can't wait to come to one of your parties. It's going to be so much fun. Um, anyway, so I just want to say thank you, all you listeners and watchers and viewers. I will put this show up tomorrow on the YouTube page, Between the Sheets with Gay and Bruno. Uh, the audio portion will go across all platforms on iTunes, Spotify, Pandora, Google Play, you name it, we're on it. Um, I really thank you for supporting us. We have a gazillion viewers and listeners strong. Um, I wouldn't be able to be where I am without the lovely women, the rotating co-hosts. And tonight, you know, it's Kara, Kim, Margie, Mara, and then of course, Kurt. 
Um, you know, I thank you all for being part of this team. I love you all. And you know, I do. And um, what is it? Some of, so, something about the something, the something of the whole parts. I'm really shitty when it talks about that. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> Justine, anytime you want to come on ever again, whether it's just to like be part of the round table or you've got something to promote, you know, mm -hmm. you're always welcome here at Between the Sheets. So thank oh. you. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, where can people find you? Let's let's give all your information now. The best yeah. thing. Okay, so to find me, just finding me, you can always find me at losangelesdominatrix.com. Super easy. Um, if you're on Instagram, you know, follow me as the Justine Cross. Very safe for work, but very lovely. Um, and then all the classes, you will always be able to find them through Los Angeles BDSM events.com. We run everything through Eventbrite. You will always be able to find it there, there right now. All the classes are going to be on a sliding scale basis. So I know things are hard for people right now. Stuff's going on. We made them sliding scale. It's very accessible for everyone. And then for the next week, LA Kink Pride. So just go to lakinkpride.com. We have an awesome lineup of people. We have stuff to give you. Can you imagine me in the middle of like quarantine, just asking for money and getting dildos and getting dick? I got it. I got a lot of it. <laughs> So it's all, I got a box of dicks. So, so, you know, anyway, so I have it I'm, and I want to give it to, to you. So, so it's there. And again, there are vendors. We, I made a comprehensive list of all the queer owned business, uh, queer owned restaurants in Los Angeles. I we really want to support our community. And we also put in an additional support page. If you need, um, you know, health and wellness, you know, stuff happening right now, a lot is going on. We also put in a list of organizations that you can check out local to Los Angeles that are by LGBTQ fam um, and other organizations that you can support. So it's all there. We got your kink and care. Um, I hope to see see some of you virtually like in LA King Pride uh, for the next week. A lot of fun stuff. So thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Cara, where can people find you? What are you doing? What are you up to? Oh, Facebook, Cara Noble or Cara Noble Voice for my voiceovers or also a questions and answer on Quora.com. Quora.com. And Kimberly Sanchez, where can people find you? Uh, right now, just Facebook and Instagram. I am still working on the website. And as soon as that's up, I'll let you all know where that is. Kim, Kim's going to hopefully open up another restaurant soon. So we're hoping. Yeah. Kim is a chef, by the way. Just Fabulous think. chef. The best. Amazing mm -hmm. food. Thank you. Um, get together and do a have a party. Food. Cara's our token straight woman, and she says that no one does potlucks better than lesbians, and that's the truth. Uh, <laughs> um, Mara, Mara Shane, what are you up to? Where can people find you, sweetheart? I'm on Facebook and Instagram. Facebook and Instagram is Mara Shane, and I also have a page uh, for my art designs that I do. Uh, it's called Custom Designs by Mara Shane. Thank you. And Margie, what are you, what are you up to? Where can people find you? Well, I'm on Facebook. I'm a, an acupuncturist. I've just started practicing in LA when we started to shut down and move from San Diego. So um, you can find me around. Look for me in some of the kink events when they open again. Hold on, can you see this? I got, I got Margie sized yesterday. You oh, you still got to come. Yes, you do. Oh. Good job. Nice. And I kept saying yesterday, she's a misogyny and cupping me. Can you just do it harder? And she's like, uh, I am. I have a tolerance for pain, obviously. So, hence, check. Um, but Justine, thank you so much. What is your partner's name? Uh, uh, my partner does not want to be identified. <laughs> <laughs> she is adorable. I, uh, yeah, I, uh, yeah. I, I want people to see you two together because if people saw what we saw before the show, you are like like the Ken and Barbie of kink. It's amazing. <laughs> she, she is a camera shy. She doesn't know what name to go by uh, as we sort of figure out this journey. But she is a very, very supportive partner behind the scenes and loves seeing me in my full peacock regalia. And we were just shooting earlier today. And what a hard job she has. She has to make sure my like skimpy lingerie is on straight. And is, oh. but isn't this terrible? I just feel so bad for her. She's just working so hard and I'm just prancing around wearing just a mask. Nothing, Nothing. just a mask. Um, you know, like I said, I work in, I work at a network. I'm photography. If you ever need an art director for those shoots, I, I'm not being kinky. Nah. No. <laughs> Seriously. I seriously have been there for 31 years. So if you ever want to brainstorm ideas, I'm with I'm I'm your gal. All right, all right. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Kurt, for manning the boards and everything for us. Um, I, I hey everyone, I don't know. Maybe next, maybe on the 19th. Um, 
I'm thinking about it. Maybe a few of us will go into the studio and the rest of us will zoom in. Um, it depends on what the laws and rules are, but I love the Zoom, but I miss you all. So um, everyone out there, please be safe. Please be well. Still follow some rules if you need them. Um, you know, uh, everything is done in peace and love and kindness. Um, you know, love your neighbor. Um, just, just love. I, I think really it's all about love. Um, so have a great night. Have a great weekend. We'll see you back here on June 19th at 7 p.m. Pacific on the United Broadcasting Network. And I'm going to go like online and buy that doxy thing soon um, because I'm worn, I'm really wearing out Hitachi. But I just want to say all of you guys, thank you so much. I love you all. Please be safe. See you in two weeks. Um, I do my Facebook live chats every single night at 730 Pacific on my Facebook page. Um, 10 to 15, 20 minutes. I sometimes ramble. Thank you. I mean, about four to 500 people watch it nightly. I am flabbergasted by that. Um, but I appreciate all you do. Um, please do watch parties. Please share this show. Um, you know, in gratitude to all of you, all of you here and all of you online watching. Thank you so much, everyone. Peace, love, happiness. I love you and namaste. Namaste.